We'll move into the third issue, again, oversight, CalWORKs Child Care and the Alternative Payment Program. We're on page 19 of the agenda. Uh huh. We'll be inviting to the table representatives from the Department of Social Services, Mr. Bland, Deputy Director of the Welfare to Work Division, Kim Johnson, uh, Branch Chief of Child Care and the Refugee Programs within DSF. Good afternoon, chairs and members. Kim Johnson, California Department of Social Services. Um, and I just want to, uh, with in terms of the overview that's already been provided by the Legislative Analyst Office that was very comprehensive and thorough and your agenda materials that are also very comprehensive about the system, I'll move right on to the questions that are included in the agenda for the department. That'd be perfect, thank you. Okay. So uh, in terms of the child care needs of those who are reengaged and no longer eligible for the young child exemption, uh, the child care services that are being offered to those are, in fact, the same as they would be to any other welfare to work client. So child care is an entitlement for all CalWORKs families uh, in stages one and two that need child care to participate in work, education, or barrier removal activities. So again, those that need child care services receive child care services. Uh, stage one child care services are fully funded. And uh, in terms of our efforts to ensure that the, the opportunity that families are learning about supportive service, services, we have uh, instituted a form that the counties are using and required to use that essentially indicates um, uh, if in the case that a family does not want child care, they have to um, basically sign initial that statement, understanding their right to receive child care at a later date should their needs change. Um, this form has been in use since uh, January of 2013. Uh, so, in, so again, um, the, for those families who indicate to any county that child care services are a need to them, um, that's not only offered, but also, again, if in the case that they don't need it at that time to indicate that, they, they do have to initial and date that form. That's, that's the piece for that specific question. I'm happy to answer any questions related to that that I can. Seeing none, why don't we move on to the next question? So again, the, the second question is similar in terms of the supportive services. The other piece I would, I would mention that we, uh, your agenda speaks to as well is in the case um, um, of sanctioned clients mm -hmm. um, around the transfer stages. So uh, we, we do want to indicate that, yes, um, the department provides technical assistance to counties to ensure um, that, the ch that the child care needs are met. So in other words, if the uh, family no, quali no longer qualifies for stage one services, um, the, the information is provided that the family may be in fact eligible under uh, child, California Department of Education's stage two child care services. Um, we are currently developing an all county letter uh, that clarifies the process to counties that they can use to ensure that that transfer occurs um, and that we expect to be out shortly. Um, and, and so that's another piece related to ensuring that that transfer is occurring. Any other questions? I just would, would want to, uh, again, look at the stage one uh, uptake. Uh, we talked about it at the uh, full um, Senate budget hearing uh, early March. Uh, LAO confirmed that the take-up rate among eligible aided families was only 29% of those that are eligible. And given the 24-month um, you know, reduced time, the, the expectation that we invest early, um, given that the clock is ticking, <laughs> Um, you know, w what are you perceiving as the barriers among participants um, with regard to accessing care? Do we think it's the reduction in the license exempt rate? You know, what, what have we done, quite frankly, to create this low uptake on child care in stage one? Sure. So, so there have absolutely been changes in resources and policies um, and then of course the economy that are all factors related to the the rate um, it, we think it's a complex uh, combination of those that that really are part of the reason um, the policy changes that have occurred over that time there have been a reduction to the ages of children so in other words we're not serving the 13 year olds um, there were different policy changes related to how 11 and 12 year old children what what op options they had to in terms so we of child care. Out the 13 year olds that's been 
That was my first year, so that's yeah. three or four years ago. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, there's also been, as you mentioned, the, the multiple issues around the rates that are well covered and addressed right. in your agenda. Right. Um, and, and also cuts to those administering the program. So in terms of um, some of the op opportunities that existed for co-location where you might have an alternative payment mm -hmm. program co-locating at a county welfare department to kind of walk families through the, the specific child care eligibility processes, um, that has not occurred at the same rate as it was once. Um, in terms of supporting families due to cuts um, in, in that have occurred related to policy change. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, as the economy improved and re-engagement efforts began, there has been an increase in the number of clients participating in welfare to work and a corresponding increase, increase in stage one and two child care. However, the overall rate of utilization remains unchanged and not increasing as we might expect. Again, we can't pinpoint the exact, we can't point to one thing in terms of the reason why, but also potential lack of child care for clients working that non-traditional shift um, that we've also discussed a little bit today, um, uh, maybe preventing a rebound from the utilization as well. Some, some portion of the CalWORKs clients are able to identify informal care arrangements for their family. Um, that's always been the case so they're um, over time. And they're, they, they have essentially made their own informal arrangements. And so, again, with some of those policy changes related, it could have impacted um, the, the it, it, it just continues to be an area, uh, you know, that gives me great concern, a, a, a clear unintended consequence of the young child exemption, uh, where we told people stay home. It's cheaper to pay you to stay home than to pay for your care. Then we changed the rule again and said, oh, come back. And not only come back, you only have 24 months to go through the program. So it's those mixed policy messages um, that uh, have compromised their ability to be successful and compromised our ability to get more children in high quality early care environments. A 29% take up rate, even given all those perhaps potential barriers you talked about, just feels to me very, very low. Mm -hmm. And I just remain concerned that we will miss the opportunity for those children to be in care um, that they are entitled to um, for as long as they possibly can. I just, I, I hope it's something that we continue to pay attention to, um, uh, do route, reach, do whatever we need to do to try to make sure that that uptake, because you know, if we don't get them in in stage one, they just miss the opportunity to go through all the stages and it's a lost opportunity. Mm -hmm. Since the beginning of, of CalWORKs, stages one, two, and three, there have always been a segment of the CalWORKs population that's figured out care on their own. We know that, and that's great. That frees up resources to provide care for those who don't have those, um, those other options. 29%, I still think, is awfully low, even given all of the mm -hmm. issues you raised. So I think, I hope it's an issue that you continue to pay attention to, because I think it's one of those things that could come back to bite us uh, as sanctions increase, and we can't figure out why people aren't able to benefit from the services that are available. Any other questions of committee members? And was that the, that was the last uh, question of you in the agenda. Thank you very much. We'll move on. Ma Madam Chair, if I yes. may, Pete Chair Vinka from the department as well. I just want to add on uh, the issue of utilization is of concern to us uh, as well. It is included in the uh, study that we've commissioned by uh, the uh, company known as RAND. Uh, to do an evaluation of the SB 1041 CalWORKs program changes. So utilization is reflected there. And then in the second full paragraph on page 20, there's the note there about the advocate's concern about access or informed. Uh, we get a lot of correspondence from clients uh, regarding their access to benefits. This is not one we've heard a lot about, and I would encourage folks to please contact us about particular agent, uh, areas. Uh, where that may be uh, of concern, we're happy and, and provide ongoing technical assistance to clients all the time with our county agencies. Uh, so to the extent people are having issues, we'd like to hear from them. Excellent. Thank you. Will you be making a presentation on behalf of Mr. Bland today? Uh, nope, she carried she both. She covered it all. Okay. Thanks. If there are uh, any questions, any uh, comments from LAO or finance? Seeing none, we'll open it up for public comment, again on issues one, two, and three. I guess I should have given you the heads up to queue up. <laughs> Again, we're focusing on issues one, two, and three, the governor's budget. And t so I'm really going to ask folks to, to, to pay attention because we have multiple opportunities for yes, public sir. comment yes, today. So today we are, fo so at this point in public comment, we are focused on uh, budget trailer bill, um, 
implementation of the Budget Act of 2014, the presentation you've heard. Is it working, is it not? Do you challenge what the department said? And again, this last panel, uh, CalWORKs Child Care and the Alternative Payment Program. Uh, given the length of the line and the fact we have public comment opportunities two more times, I'm really gonna ask folks to try to limit their comments to one minute. Fair enough? One minute. Thank you. First witness. Hi there. Um, I'm a provider and I'm going to ask that this panel include providers in the behind the, the scenes discussions. We can tell you why the uh, stage one uh, cases are not being met. Uh, we have foster children that are not being accepted into the program. We have children participating in a homeless program who are in an, uh, in an unapproved activity because the homeless shelter requires that, that are being placed in licensed ex exempt care where other homeless families, instead of engaging in work-related activities, are staying to watch children in poor quality settings. If these children were accepted into the stage one program, you would have many of those slots taken. I can tell you there are 65 children right now sitting down the street from my center that are in a homeless shelter that are in probably the worst conditions I've ever seen. So if providers such as myself who are boots on the ground in the forefront of this every single day working with children are included in some of these conversations. We can tell you where the breaks are. We can also save a lot of money because there are significant inefficiencies in the things that we're required to do to uh, manage these programs. Right now, I currently manage four software programs. If, and I'm hoping I do get CSPP so that I can start helping the children that are at the shelter, um, if I get that, I will now have five programs that I need to run. I will also have a plethora of additional paperwork that doesn't come with the AP program. So I think maybe looking at some of this and working together to make the process more efficient and identifying the holes by bringing high quality providers like me, my centers are all tier five. Thank you so, so much. Just a follow up question, because we're not saying y'all come because there's we have a slow uptake in, in stage one. The kids you are referencing, their mothers are former CalWORKs recipients and they would qualify for stage one? The children that I'm referencing, their parents are currently living in the Solutions for, for Change homeless shelter. In the that's homeless not the shelter question. Were they ever on home? cash aid? I don't know See, that. See, that's the point. And that's, they have to have been to qualify for this program. I think that, I believe that what happens is when we send them, it's not necessarily that it was the cash aid issue. I think it's the specific requirements of the homeless shelter for them to participate in 90 days of activities before they enter a specific work training program. I got you. That prevents the children from being enrolled in a high that's, quality then that's, program. Then, then that's not just, then that's a, then they don't meet the qualifications of the program. And but so just, we, we need to look broader at terms of how we support those families. Correct. They don't meet stage one qualifications. Correct. Okay, so, thanks for that clarification. Homeless children and foster children need to be prioritized and included in the system regardless of the situation they're in because they need these services. We watch a child with Down syndrome, two years old, sit there in an adult chair. And you know, so that's a different bigger policy issue, I, I, yes. I get it now, that you, that, 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 but these programs don't cover those populations. Thank you. Thanks. Next witness. Appreciate your time. Um, we are two parents that um, are part of the program and we support the, the budget being discussed as well. Um, my name is Ronnie Lane. I thank you for listening. I am a citizen of the city of San Gabriel, California. My daughter is five years old. She's a student at LA Up. Um, because of this program socially, she has been more confident, knows how to raise her hand, waits her turn in line, and works well with other children, just to name a few things while other non-preschoolers will be starting and adjusting at an older age. Academically, her vocabulary is extensive. She learns about lifelong healthy eating habits, even telling daddy, no, that candy is not good for me. <laughs> she even grows vegetables and measures them to even conducting a class presentation with a poster board as a visual aid that she created. <laughs> My daughter loves her school, receives social and academic benefits, and best of all, she cannot wait to go back for more. On behalf of my family and as a citizen of the state of California, I thank you for the finding, I thank you for the funding to keep this program alive and healthy for the sake of our children, families, and communities we live in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next witness, please. I'm gonna ask you to try to keep it to one minute so we can get to the whole line. Thank you. Yes, thank you for having me. My name is Dalfina Rocha, and I have two children. My daughter's nine, and my son is five, and his name is Diego. And he, uh, they both have attended Alma Inclusive Preschool in East Los Angeles, and they have been benefited from this tremendously. 
they have not only been academically and socially ready for kindergarten, but they know their four strokes in swimming through this amazing aquatic <laughs> program that this um, inclusive preschool um, provides. We are just so grateful and we are so thankful and we could not have um, just, our, our family life has been enriched by this preschool. And I just hope that the funding keeps uh, just coming so that other families have the same opportunity as mine. Thank you very Thank much. You. Next witness, one minute, please. Good afternoon, Jean Alion, CEO of the Professional Association for Childhood Education. We represent the, all the private preschools in the state. And again, we just, uh, the, we, want, we support the Women's Caucus to ask, so please. And then again, the re regional market rate and the standard re reimbursement rate, please look at that again, um, slots, and as well as quality improvement, which would also include those private providers that are doing the work. We need to include the whole system. So thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next witness, one minute. Thank you for having me today. My name is Camille mahan Carr, and I'm here in support of the um, SB 548 that she talked about earlier. Um, it's, it's the Raising of Child Care Quality and Accessibility Act. I am a parent who had the ability to have the early learning child care for two of my children, but my third child wasn't, and he is speech delayed and behind and in reading programs due to the fact that he didn't get this thing because in 2008 all the slots were caught and we were not eligible. So I'm just encouraging you to make more slots available for parents so they'll be able to have the same opportunity as my two older children, which one graduated with honors, got a full ride scholarship, and the other one is graduating this year. So I know how I can work. Thank you. Thank you. Next witness, please, one minute. My name is Sheila Lewis. I belong to Congregation Beth Am in Los Altos Hills, Santa Clara County, 1,650 families. Our congregation is part of a faith-based consortium of San Mateo and Santa Clara County urging early childhood education. And uh, my children and my grandchildren didn't need these services, but there are many, many people, children in those counties that do, and I urge you to support that bill. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Next witness, please. One minute. Good afternoon, Madam, Mitchell, Ma Madam Chair and members. Um, I'm Eleanor Clement Glass from Silicon Valley Community Foundation, and I'm representing not only the foundation, but the thousands of Silicon Valley children who are denied access to healthy care and development. They're entering our local school systems behind, and they are squarely starting their education in the education achievement gap, which they have very limited capacity to um, uh, to address. So what we'd like to do is ask the legislature for three things. One is to provide the preschool that was promised last year to all low-income four-year-olds in the state to reinvest in quality child care, uh, particularly quality infant and toddler care, and to increase the reimbursement rates to learning. Uh, to the providers so that we do have quality child care uh, and affordable child care services that reduce the financial burden to our families. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next witness, one minute, please. I thank you. Thank you also, Senator Mitchell, for your participation in the Water Cooler Conference last month. It was very much appreciated. Um, I also represent Congregation Beth Am. My name is Harvey Schloss. Um, we, uh, I'm a numbers guy, and I, I <laughs> love I, I love the fact that all the numbers line up in support of increased access to early education, uh, the economics, but I view this and other congregations and churches are viewing this as an article of faith. Um, and we think it's very important uh, that, the, that there's some attention paid to the fact that not only is this an economically uh, viable uh, investment for the state to be making, but it's morally and ethically correct. It unlocks enormous potential uh, among these human beings. And every year we delay, um, we lose a lot of babies who are just left behind. So we would like you to urge you to support increased investments to provide uh, all low-income children with access to preschool. And uh, just to let you know also that the Jewish Public Affairs Committee has a, a made this issue uh, its, its number one issue this year in our advocacy day coming up in May. We'll see you there. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate that. Next witness, please, one minute. Good afternoon. My name is Brenda Pinedo. I'm a single mother of three great children, but my kids have more than one mother. My child care provider, Martha <laughs> Delgado in Long Beach, had my kids from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. and taught my kids everything they know, their colors, shapes, numbers, and letters. They were reading as young as three and a half. My oldest is in an advanced class and will 
probably be given the option to have him skip a grade. When I first met Martha, I had been trying to support my kids on minimum wage. I was in the middle of leaving a domestic abuse situation. I knew I had to create a better life for my children. So while I was working part time, I also studied to become a nurse. But I felt very low and I didn't have reliable childcare I could afford. Having Martha changed my life. Now I have a much better job and I'm close to being able to transfer from community college to nursing school. I've worked 40 hours per week and I'm in school two to three nights per week. Five seconds. There are a lot of moms like me. We need quality, reliable, and affordable childcare that gets our kids ready for kindergarten while we get our families to middle class. SB 548 would expand access to childcare for parents like me. California's women, family, child care providers, and moms like me need SB 548, the Raising Child Care Quality and Accessibility Act. Please support it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Next witness, please. One minute. Hello. My name is Laura Hoffman. I'm a single mother, and I've been a family child care provider in Santa Cruz for 13 years. Um, being a provider isn't easy. The hours are long, and the day daily battle to make ends meet. Many providers are struggling to stay afloat. When I purchased my house in 2004, I had to work very hard to, su to survive the recession and housing crisis. They say the recession is over, but it doesn't feel that way. The high cost of housing makes it impossible for me to accept CalWORKs and voucher. Mm -hmm. Quality and affordable childcare is essential in preparing our children for success in school life and allows hardworking families to work with peace of mind, knowing that their children are safe well cared for and most of all loved. Supporting the industry of home child care would benefit all children and families and professionalize an invisible industry. Our industry shouldn't be invisible. Our work as providers is so critical to the families we serve and our state economy. Five seconds. Please join me in supporting the child care profession, supporting the parents that rely on us to take care and educate their young children so that they can go to work. Please support raising child care quality Act and Accessibility Act, SB 548. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Next witness, please. One minute. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members. My name is Derek Hodges, and I'm a program technician with the California State Controller's Office, helping to return the over $7 billion unclaimed dollars here in California. I am here to testify about an even bigger treasure, our children's future, and ask that you prioritize support for child care assistance in the upcoming budget. I know that child care works. It works for children, parents, and it works for our whole community. I was a single dad, divorced at a young age. I raised my two children by myself in Chicago. Thanks to my mother, who was a child care director, my children received great child care, and I received great advice. Through the daily interaction at the child care center, they were able to get started early, learning important social skills so that they were able to learn quickly. They learned nutrition and health as well as the foundation of academics, and they were nurtured. When they started school, they were ready. Mm -hmm. Now, I have two children with master's degrees. My mm -hmm. oldest daughter is a case manager with the Department of Veterans Affairs in Houston, Texas, and my son is a major in the United States Air Force, Air Force Station in Tokyo, Japan. Five seconds. My youngest daughter is now in college at Tennessee State University. Her brother's alma mater. Without that great start, I don't think my children would be where they are today. I want this for all children because quality early childhood education is the means of closing the education and economic gap in our country. California is the seventh largest economy in the world, but student math and English achievement ranks 47th in the United States. We need to do better with quality early education. California children will be more likely to go to college and have less chance of getting in trouble. Please make child care affordable for more children as you write your budget support, the Raising Child Care Quality and Accessibility Act, SB 548. Thank you so much. You. Appreciate it. One minute, please. Next witness. Hello. My name is Vicki Ramos-Harris with Early Edge California. We want to thank the Senate for its leadership on early childhood education and care, and thanks to Senator Block for your comments today on professional development. It's critical to the workforce and critical to quality in early childhood education. Thanks also for last year's investments in our early childhood education system. We need you, we urge you to build on that momentum and to fulfill the promise of last year's budget to um, provide access to all low-income fours in preschool, um, to increase quality for infant uh, access for infant and toddlers, and to increase investments in quality. And investments as well is 
in the reimbursement rates, particularly around the adjustment factors to ensure that we're more, I'm sorry, to more fully covering the cost of care for infants and toddlers. Thank you. Thank you. Next witness, please. One minute. Hi, thank you. My name is Sherry Springer, and I'm here representing private providers with Californians for Quality Early Learning, CEQUAL. And we just want to say we support the Women's Caucus ask for additional funds for slots and for rates. Um, we also believe in the mixed delivery system. And as part of the QRIS, we'd like to see more private providers included in, in um, those programs. And um, one of the concerns as far as um, the uh, asking for more slots and the um, people who applied, the rates were probably the most uh, uh, reason why there were not as many uh, people applying for the grants because it is not affordable. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Next witness, one minute. Hello, my name is Carrie Murphy. I'm the Director of Early Childhood Programs at the Ventura County Office of Education. Uh, we oversee six programs that have two primary focuses, improving access to early learning and improving the quality of early learning, ensuring success when children enter kindergarten. Last week, the U.S. Department of Education released a report, a matter of equity, preschool in America, indicating seven out of ten eligible preschool children do not have access to a subsidized space in California. The 110,000 lost spaces in California has translated into a loss of 3,444 lost spaces in Ventura County, according to tracking conducted by our local planning council. We ask that you fulfill the commitment made in last year's state budget to provide preschool to all low-income four-year-olds. We also ask that you provide the much-needed funding for the increased access for our infants and toddlers. Mm -hmm. Regarding quality, we know that we can ask any kindergarten teacher and they could very easily identify which children have attended preschool by their social emotional skills and their academic readiness. We very much appreciate your support uh, through quality initiative work last year with the $50 million for a QIS block grant. Five seconds. We ask that you broaden quality initiative support this coming year. We've seen it work in our county with 84% of our QIS sites having been rated with high quality. Thank you. Thank you very much. I see there are a number of Parent Voices t-shirts, so I ask that you just not be redundant. Feel free to say ditto to your fellow Parent Voices member who spoke before you. First witness, one minute. Good afternoon. My name is Sheila Shavies. I'm a parent and adoptive parent, grandparent, great-grandparent, and I'm also an advocate with uh, Parent Voices of Oakland. And uh, as an advocate, we find that uh, the parents who receive CalWORKs uh, assistance and they are not uh, adequately assessed for child care mm -hmm. needs and are not told of its availability. Mm -hmm. Providers in the field also note that many families who are currently receiving CalWORKs assistance are on local care alternative payment waiting lists, suggesting that an inaccuracy of the needs assessment or inappropriate referral for child care. Mm -hmm. I would like to impress that the, um, the criticalness of uh, the need for the commitment to push the governor to invest $600 million into the general care fund. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Next witness, one minute. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Taisha Allen. I'm with Pair Voices Oakland. Quality and early childhood education is extremely important. I'm a mother of three. My child care is my, mo my grandmother, who's 80 years old and ailing. While having her is great, she has stopped her life to care for my children so that I have an opportunity to work. My oldest daughter, Julie, is 11. She is an honor student that continues to hold an A average. She tutors eighth graders in algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. <laughs> I contribute her success to early childhood. My middle child, Jasmine, was at home with family, not a lot of structure. Therefore, kindergarten has been tra a traumatic event. And if she had the same early childhood services, she would not have had as many challenges as she faces today. Please reconsider affordable early childhood education because it impacts the entire family. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next witness, sir. Hi, my name is Mel Asagai, representing Compton Unified School District with 24,000 uh, students in South uh, Los Angeles County. Uh, we, we want to thank you for what you've done so far uh, on, on funding last year and this year, and we do want to strongly support the Women's Caucus proposal on increased investment in ECE. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next witness, please. One minute. 
Hello, my name is Tasha Guzman, and I'm a parent leader with Parent Voices of Hayward. I'm here today representing other parents from my chapter that couldn't be here. I ask that the Senate reinvest $600 million as outlined in the Women's Caucus proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Next witness. Hi, Jennifer Greppi. I am the organizer for Parent Voices in Southern Alameda County. And I just wanted to talk anecdotally quickly about this 29% um, uptake rate mm -hmm. and stage one and what in stage one and what happens on a daily basis on my telephone so I get the phone calls from families who are not able to access child care and my first question I ask them is are you currently receiving cash aid I would say at least 30 times a week the answer is yes mm -hmm. that's unacceptable mm -hmm. there is a breakdown at the county offices mm -hmm. Child care is not being offered to these families the way that it should be, and there has to be a change. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Next witness. Hello, I'm on. I call Yuan Yuan. My name is Yuan Yuan. I have six children. I am a parent. I think child care is very important for me. Because of the child care council, it has helped me to study. It has made me very able to focus on my studies and to go to the college. It has made me now very healthy and healthy. So child care is necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I heard child care. I wish time. I could translate that, but I can't. But I heard sure. child care with great enthusiasm. <laughs> I got sure that you have the resources to do that. <laughs> so uh, when the last governor um, cut the budget and, and was wringing his hands and saying there's nothing else to cut but services for children, the destitute, and the most vulnerable population, we, we took the bullet and bit it. But now that the economy is recovering, we're still biting the bullet. I think that it's time to, to really be serious about where that money's gonna come from. I know there's a concern. I know Senator Marty Block said, well, all the money's going to Prop 98. But as we keep wringing our hands and saying that money's already kind of set aside for something, we also have to think that there's still lots of money going out to corporate dole outs. Like in, in the corporate welfare system, the bigger, the bigger the corporation, the bigger dole out they get. In social welfare, you have to be poorer to get more help. I think that it's time to look on that side of the equation and, and we'll find money there. So since we're, we, we don't want to increase taxes, why don't we reconsider some of those corporate welfare? Nobody talks about that, but we really need to look at them seriously. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Appreciate it. Next witness, one minute, please. 